Amidst the creaking sounds of the bones, Jiang Cheng lies, trying to escape something. He used to be a programmer, but now he has become a skeleton. Even he himself does not know why or how this happened to him. However, that is the least of his worries right now because he is crushed by the impact of a foot that stands on his back. The impact causes him to be startled, and he looks back to find a giant beast snarling at him. He once again asks the same question that he has been asking ever since he got here. Just why is this happening to him? But there is no one to answer him. In the year 2050, the Great Westlands open beta, with highly realistic and open-world gameplay, the launch of the game nearly sent millions of players into an absolute frenzy. Swords and magic that have been a subject of humanity's fascination and fantasies. The Great Wastelands allowed for such fantasies to turn into reality. With thousands of jobs and billions of missions available, the game allowed many terminally online netizens to stay within this virtual fantasy of theirs. The game's popularity brought upon an immense number of orders to the beta testing studio that was producing it. As a result, many beta testers had to work overtime to test the game, and among the beta testers who had joined the Great Wasteland, Jiang Cheng was one of them. However, nearly three weeks before the launch of the game, Jiang Cheng, who had ended up working for 42 hours to complete a huge chain of requests, experienced some abnormalities and lost his life. The very first memory upon waking up is that of a voice that is trying to wake him up. It was a beautiful girl telling him to wake up or she is going to lose her life here. Jiang Cheng, who just woke up as a skeleton, obviously does not know what is going on here. He looks at the pretty girl, and the first thought he gets is if this is heaven that everyone goes to after death. However, realization soon hits him when a zombified wolf of the elite class approaches him after causing chaos in the surrounding area. The girl urges Jiang Cheng to stop the wolf as if this is what he is supposed to do, but Jiang Cheng is lost in his thoughts. The reason for his surprise is the fact that the zombified wolf is found in the starting village of the Great Wistlands. And he finally gets it. This is not the heaven that everyone goes to after death, but this is the starting village of the Great Wastelands, the desert of death. He has reincarnated into the world of the Great Wastelands. Jiang Cheng comes to his senses when the girl beside him reminds him in a commanding tone that if he does not take care of the zombified wolf, they are going to end up losing their lives. Jiang Cheng is offended by the tone of the girl because he does not even know her and she has the guts to order her around, which is in this case, Jiang Cheng and the girl beside him. The zombified wolf opens his large mouth to attack and Jiang Cheng reminds all the information about the enemy in front of him. The zombified wolf is a level 2 carnivorous monster that has a weak spot at its neck. Jiang Cheng has taken care of many of them during the beta testing of the game, so he also rushes forward with a sword in his hand to finish him off in one move. However, contrary to his expectations, he is beaten up by the zombified wolf, but he does not understand the reason for his hands to be this weak. After being beaten up enough, Jiang Cheng notices his own hand, and finally realization hits him that he is reincarnated as a beginner-level skeleton soldier. Looks like this body of his was probably summoned by a beginner necromancer, but right now his priority is to grab his sword again that lies just inches away from him. However, he was stopped by the large foot of the zombified wolf that is now standing on his back. Jiang Cheng gets a glimpse of his life right before his eyes as he ponders if this is how things are going to end. He became a pro when he was younger and managed to win two championships, leaving behind an amazing record in pro esports. At that time, he thought he was the world's main protagonist, but a car accident changed everything. The trauma from the car accident left his hands forever trembling, causing his game abilities to decline immensely which ended his career as a professional esports player. To pay for his hefty medical bills and the bond of the contract that he ended up breaching, he eventually set his pride aside and became a beta tester for the games. He, who had refused to bow to fate, ended up losing his life like trash. In his losing consciousness, he could hear the voices of the people standing near him, who were not the least worried about him, 
talking about calling for mortuary instead of the doctor because they already announced him dead. They were more worried about the fact that they could not retrieve the items from his inventory in the game because they cannot retrieve them now that he is dead and they have wasted their resources on him. Someone suggested calling his family members to pay them the condolence money, but that idea is ruled out when someone says that he owed the organization a lot of money so he paid what he owed with his own life, and that is the greatest thing that could occur to him. They keep telling him he's probably dying without any regrets because he already won two world championships. At the mention of the regrets, a new energy arises in Zhang Cheng. He has a lot of regrets, so there is no way he is willing to die like this. If God gave him another chance, he would definitely take the matter of his fate in his own hands. With that said, the miserly skeleton gets a purplish energy like that of lightning from somewhere and grabs the leg of the zombified wolf on top of him. Just then, a notification window pops up out of nowhere saying that the system had detected his intense desire to live and that the godly evolution system has been awakened. It even states that the purpose of the system is to help its user to evolve endlessly until they reach the peak and become the strongest creature in this world. Jane Chang is going through evolution right now as the system keeps on popping notifications, such as the special gift pack, has been used due to the user's impending death and the health has been fully restored as a result. The zombified wolf steps back as a precaution from the lightning, but it is already too late and an impact causes it to fly into the sky. There is only one instinct in Zhang Cheng right now and that is survival. The cute girl is also shocked by the results because the head of the zombified lays separated from its body in front of her and the one to end it is also standing in front of her. It soon starts raining and Zhang Cheng looks at the head of the zombified wolf, relieved that he has won this battle. The notification pops up again, telling him that the buff has ended and that he has finished off a level 3 zombified wolf, so he receives 10 experience points and 10 evolution points. Zhang Cheng stands in a victorious pose. He celebrates his survival in the rain for some time, and then comes to a realization that his body is not as bad as he originally thought it was. While he is busy observing his body, another person is also observing him. That cute girl that is still in shock that the beginner skeleton soldier that she summoned is so amazing. The Great Wasteland is a game with an extremely high degree of freedom and realism. Because of this, there are infinite possibilities within the mechanics of the game. Furthermore, there is an extremely small chance that the creature which is summoned by the player would undergo a mutation. But such an event is very rare, with a probability of one in a billion it is not an exaggeration. So, mutated summoned creatures can become a huge boost for players on their leveling journey. Overpowering the monsters is not just a dream anymore. All this explanation is not to just bore you people, but a realization made by the cute girl that summoned Zhang Cheng. It seems like she has been extremely lucky and summoned a mutated creature. While Zhang Cheng is busy clearing the field, his summoner is busy looking at the materials and the equipment that is being dropped because she can see the amount of money it can bring and her rent for the next month is secured. She is startled from her daydreaming when a head of a beast rolls towards her and she herself admits that she was worried that something came to attack her. She slowly approaches the head, surprised at the fact that her summoned skeleton soldier is able to take care of another beast in such a short amount of time and she does not know who the summoner is anymore due to the difference in strength between them. Even though she was able to summon a mutated creature, her summoning level is only one so this is all the more amazing to her. Zhang Cheng keeps on clearing the field by defeating the zombified wolves in the area because he has already adopted to the body of the skeleton and the zombified wolves in the newbie zone can no longer pose a threat to him. Surviving should not be a problem right now, and he was even able to level up due to this fight with the zombified wolves. Nonetheless, he did not expect to be reborn in the newly launched world of the Great Wasteland in this way, so he thinks that the woman who summoned her must be a player. But the problem is that he cannot make sound without vocal cords, he is a skeleton after all. 
He is all done with his fight, and now is surprised by this system that appeared in front of him. According to the system screen, it seems like as long as he keeps on defeating people or monsters, he can evolve. The system even tells him about some enhancement points that he can earn by defeating bosses, but unfortunately, he has not activated them yet. Maybe he can use these enhancement points to enhance weapons, but even though he participated in the beta testing, he never heard of this feature before that can enable a summoned creature to have his own evolving system. As he is pondering whether he has been able to keep evolving as a beginner-level skeleton soldier, a screen pops up in front of him that he has gained enough points for the first evolution, and he is given a choice whether he would like to use these evolution points to evolve into a skeleton swordsman. Since Jiang Cheng has no other choice, he accepts the offer to see what this system has in store for him. Upon selecting the option, the evolution begins in the form of a fire surrounding him that is supposed to be some sort of evolution protection. This even enables him to increase his health, mana, and all attributes by 80%. He further gets the Skeleton Swordsman exclusive weapon that is Bone Blade Steel Sword. The evolution is completed and even Zhang Cheng is surprised to see the stat screen because he did not expect that a single evolution would bring such a significant improvement. He gets an additional skill and a 20% attack boost that should be able to compensate for his lack of strength as a skeleton. Without waiting, Zhang Cheng tests his new skills by swinging the sword and finds it pretty good. He deduces that with this, even without using tactics, his skill should already pass the players of the same level. So as a summoned creature, if he were to be discovered by the other players, he would definitely be seen as a heretic. Although he does not want to attract trouble, trouble would find him sooner or later, so he needs to get stronger quickly. Different from those players on the leaderboards and guild members, as a solo player, he must have the strength to take on a hundred to survive. He must become stronger than any of them. Another pop-up appears, urging him to earn more evolution points. However, continuing to defeat the wolves is not going to benefit him anymore, so he needs to change the maps. But there is something he must clarify about the relationship between him the reborn summoned creature and the summoner. Before figuring that out, he has to bring along the summoner with him, even though he totally forgot her for a while now, and she is happily looking at all the materials dropped from the fight. She goes on her own to say that she can exchange in-game currency for real money in the Great Wastelands, and the exchange rate is very high. From her blabbering, Jiang Cheng can easily figure out that she is a Nube player, she finally notices him and his evolution that he changed somehow from the small skeleton to the one right in front of her. She showers him with praises and hugs him while daydreaming about getting rich overnight. Jiang Cheng knows that the first step should be trying to communicate with her and poses with his hands. He is finally able to tell her that they need to change locations of the fighting monsters. However, the girl unexpectedly starts whining that she does not want to leave this place because there are a lot of monsters around here, and he can clear them out for her. This is the first time Jiang Cheng has seen the summoner begging her own summoned creature. He is worried that the monsters are respawning here so quickly that the other's players might notice this place, and he is worried about running into high-level guild players who might be helping nudies. Even though there is no red name system in the world of the Great Wastelands yet, eliminating players, looting gear, and taking monsters in the wilderness is as common as it gets. Therefore, if this whining girl is eliminated by the other players, he might disintegrate. The only way he can think of to deal with the newbie player is to pick her up and move around as he pleases. However, this action startles the girl, and she demands he put her down because there is still a lot of material for her to collect. As a reborn entity, Jiang Cheng has no more attachments, and he plans to use his game knowledge to take the lead. He first wants to defeat hidden bosses and collect all the rare equipment in the game. He makes his decision and decides to start from a dangerous place with a dangerous beast. It might be dangerous, but it is worth it. The area closest to the newbie zones is the hidden dungeons, and the target there is Ferocious Claw Bear. At the Savage Bear Mountain, 
The mysterious roars and the shouting of the players can be heard clearly. The players are cursing and running around in an attempt to escape this place. One player is left behind and is at the mercy of a humongous beast in front of him. He is worried that he cannot be eliminated in this gear and with all this gold because this means that he would lose all his earnings in the game. He feels someone approaching and thinks that his teammates that just fled for their lives are here to rescue him. He turns around, relieved but is surprised to find a skeleton holding a girl on his shoulder and his voice is stuck in his throat. The player shouts because there is no way he can be saved now, but the girl on the shoulder of the skeleton shouts louder and demands to be taken down. The pitiful player is eventually eliminated and faded after facing the bleeding debuff. The ferocious claw bear who is level 7 beast is still not appeased and rushes towards Jang Cheng to attack him. The girl on his shoulder reminds him that she told him this place was dangerous but he would not listen. She suggests running from this area because even level 5 players could not defeat this claw bear and fighting here could mean that they lose all the materials they just collected. Jang Cheng, however, shares the same worries as her. He even considered it good luck that the players guarding here were already wiped out and no one would disturb him anymore. Otherwise, he was considering setting up a barrier to block the players from entering. He is even glad that the previous players helped him gather all the ferocious claw bears together at one place. Not only is it more advantageous for him to farm monsters, but they also solved the perquisites for spawning hidden bosses. Jane Cheng finally drops the girl on the ground, and she is not happy about it. She even reminds him that she is the master here, but soon shuts up when she sees that they have been surrounded by ferocious claw bears, but Jang Cheng is anything but happy upon this encounter. The girl is too scared and practically begs the skeleton to leave this place instantly. However, her summoned skeleton does not listen to her and even rushes towards a ferocious claw bear in the vicinity. The system keeps sending red notifications that he has caught the attention of a ferocious claw bear, but Jang Cheng is not affected by it in the least. His aim is to get all the attention on himself first so that he does not have to worry about the girl, and then he can use his knowledge of the game to take them all down. The bears attack him but he is able to predict their every move and dodges each attack because he cannot withstand more than two moves with his current health and going unharmed is the only option he has. The girl is amazed by his dodging technique because the bears cannot even hit her little skeleton. She even notices that the skeleton is even misleading the claw bears to attack each other. Jang Cheng has more speed than the normal players as a skeleton and furthermore, the claw bears have thick skin and high attack, but they have slow speed, so Jang Cheng has a speed advantage over them. He even knows that claw bears have a weak spot on their heads and ankles, so taking advantage of this knowledge, he activates a quick sword technique that increases the attack speed by 20%. Using his speed, he attacks their joints to defeat the claw bears. In the end, all the claw bears are limping so as long as he attacks their weak points, he can deal double critical damage and finish them off. However, ferocious claw bears are called newbie eliminators for a reason. After damaging their limbs, they have a chance to use their active skill and Zhang Cheng is so lucky that the claw bears in front of him are using their active skill. Now, that is the thunder strike that the ferocious claw bears use during tough battles. It delivers a powerful shock and electric current that instantly paralyzes players. When the player is paralyzed, they move to eliminate the player for good. And that is why these claw bears are called newbie eliminators. The attack is on its way, but Jang Cheng looks prepared somehow and takes the shock wave. The girl that everyone forgot about is worried that her little skeleton cannot endure the attack, but is surprised to find her skeleton standing without much damage. The reason for this is that as a skeleton and an undead, Jang Cheng no longer has flesh and blood, so he will not be stunned. Taking advantage of the opportunity, Jang Cheng jumps into the air and strikes at the bear's head because after using the special attack, the ferocious claw bears have a three-second cooldown and this is enough time for Jang Cheng 
to attack their weak points and give double damage and eliminate them. The girl is stunned at the power of her little skeleton, while Jiang Cheng takes care of the ferocious claw bears one by one, because he has already memorized the ferocious claw bears attack module, and with the help of the skeleton's abilities, he can eliminate them without taking damage. He is able to gain generous rewards by just taking care of one claw bear, and decides to level up right here before his encounter with the hidden boss. He levels up to level 4 during the fight, and the girl is so happy about it that she has tears in her eyes as she praises his smooth movements. She notes that these movements are just like the actions of the legendary gamers in the online gaming world. The in-game special guest of the game's closed beta, the famous player Jane Cheng. She finds that it is practically identical and thinks that it could be an Easter egg designed by the Great Wasteland Game Development Team for Zhang Cheng, and she was able to summon it. The name of the girl is Zhang Mingming, and we are finally able to find out about it because she scolds herself by calling her name. This is not the time to be thinking about such things. Getting this summon is like hitting a jackpot. Furthermore, she is starting to find this little skeleton more and more handsome. She diverts her attention by the scattered gold coins and the materials on the ground. Since she is so lucky to have summoned such a powerful creature, of course she has to make the most of his abilities. She encourages the little skeleton in her mind because her good life depends on him, and she does so with so much enthusiasm that even Jiang Cheng is able to feel that something is watching him. Jiang Cheng can see that his evolution points are increasing, and he would be able to have a second evolution soon, but a sudden notification surprises him. The notification tells him that due to his outstanding performance, a hidden evolution path has been unlocked. Zhang Cheng had no idea about it, and he notices that the hidden evolution path requires twice the evolution points than the normal evolution paths. Although it might take more time and effort, he knows that high investments means high returns, and he was planning to clear out the monsters here for the hidden boss anyway, so he chose the hidden evolution path. He is as curious about the hidden path evolution as we are, but the claw bearers do not look too excited about it because they can see their end in front of them. At the bear mountain, Zhang Cheng cares for the last ferocious bear. He checks the system screen and finds that with the increase in level, the evolution points yield decrease significantly. He is missing just 20 evolution points from unlocking the hidden evolution path, even after all this frenzy of eliminating claw bears. Unexpectedly, this is really frustrating for Zhang Cheng. There is a probability that there will not be any low-level bears respawning in this area in the short term. Although he was not able to gather enough evolution points, luckily he successfully eliminated all the bears within the time limit and level restrictions. Just as he is observing the materials dropped by the bears, a sudden notification appears telling him that a hidden boss has appeared in the vicinity. So Jiang Cheng now has to deal with the hidden boss of the Bear Mountain, and he is very interested in it. The trigger conditions for the hidden boss in the Bear Mountain are very strict. Only players with a level below 10 who eliminate all the wild monsters in Bear Mountain within 45 minutes can trigger it and such stringent conditions are difficult for players to discover. Jane Cheng jumps up a tree and finds the hidden boss with ease. It is the ruler of the Bear Mountain area, Bear Mountain Lord of Level 15. Jane Cheng explains that low-level bosses are actually good because as long as the players do not enter the trigger range, they behave quite obediently. But wait a minute, is Zhang Cheng considered a player? Not really, he guesses. At first, he considers attacking it directly, but he stops himself because the trigger skill of the mountain bear boss is quite tricky for early stage players, so trying to overcome it purely based on the speed and experience advantages would be too risky. However, Zhang Cheng cannot seem to remember the trigger skill of the ferocious claw bear boss. During the internal testing, he remembers being chased around by it the first time it was triggered. He cannot recall it now, but anyways, it is not easy to deal with it. He is not the one at fault for not remembering. There are just so many of these early stage mini-bosses that it is hard to keep track of them. 
So he decides that it is safer to complete the evolution first, but he would have to wait for the monsters to respawn in this area. Finally, in his free time, Jang Cheng noticed that this feeling of being a summoned creature is really strange. He can feel a connection between him and the girl that summoned him. Ever since he was reborn as a summoned creature, it is as if something has been linking him to her, so he decides to find her first just in case. Even though the distance is a bit far, he has a feeling that he knows what she is up to without even looking. Jang Cheng finally finds her near the defeated bears. Thinking that this is as he expected, she is busy looting the materials. However, he finds some other players in the area, as well who are talking among themselves, that all the monsters have been wiped out by someone already, and the audacity of that someone to come and dare to clear out the hunting grounds of their Tiger Hunter Guild. One of them suggests that it could be the people from the first sect, because their vice president fought with them for the control of the Brook Valley area just a few days ago. He even reminds them what their guild leader said about such encounters, but his teammate shuts him up to not tell the guild leader about this matter. They start searching for the player who caused such a frenzy because he should be nearby, because the corpses of the bears are still present. Even if they do not find that player, they still have the rewards to enjoy. One of the guild members starts looking around while complaining that if there is still a claw bear around, he would be done for and his expensive equipment would go to waste. However, he comes across the girl that is greedily checking out the material from the dropped bears and estimating their worth. He approaches the girl and demands where she came from, making the girl startled. His loud voice also attracts the attention of his teammates, and they also come forward. The girl tells with a polite but awkward smile that she came to look for his summoned creature because he lost his way. But the man is not convinced because this is the first time he heard of a summoned creature running away and demands for the location of the other members of her little team. The girl tells them that she does not have a team and she only came here with her summoned creature. The man does not argue with her anymore and tells another member, Shadow Owl, to tie her up and prevent her from running away or logging off by taking her own life and interrogating her about her other teammates. Shadow Owl happily obliges the order. The girl gets defensive, but the guild members tell her that her efforts are futile. Shadow Owl uses his abilities to investigate and tells the other members that this girl might not be lying and that this girl is a level 9 undead mage. He further tells them that the undead mages summon skeletons that are slow and have low attack power, so she might not even be able to deal with a single claw bear. The wounds on the bears on the ground are neat and precise, like the work of a sword-based profession. Shadow Owl is able to tell with his abilities that this girl has not joined any team, so there must be someone else behind this. She might be just a misguided treasure hunter who accidentally ended up in the bear area. Treasure hunters refers to the low-level players who follow behind large monster hunting parties to scavenge items. They are also called bone pickers. The leader of the group leaves the girl to Shadow Owl and tells the other members to keep searching the area for the player responsible for the bear hunting. Shadow Owl creepily approaches the girl with his fast reflexes and tells her to not to move or he would eliminate her right away. He approaches her, intending to touch her because the most realistic aspect of the Great Wasteland game is its tactile sensation. The girl is too scared and calls for her little skeleton in her mind and like a death reaper, Jing Cheng appears behind the Shadow Owl. The guild members hear the loud shout of the Shadow Owl from a distance and look back to find a skeleton warrior in the vicinity. The girl holds on to the skeleton while crying that she has been pretending for too long and cannot take it anymore. The guild members are shocked to find that a skeleton warrior was able to ambush shadow owls and run towards them. The shadow owl cries out while holding his arm and Jiang Cheng picks up the girl and makes a run, while the captain of the guild catches on that the wounds on the bears can be caused by the undead mage and her summoned creature. After finally joining all the pieces together, the captain gives orders to chase the two of them because if they got away, they would not be able to answer the guild leader. The guild members are chasing Jiang Cheng and the girl on his shoulder. 
The girl thought that she would never see him again, so she was somewhat relieved. The members are catching up with them, so the girl suggests taking her down so that she can help him in a fight. Jang Cheng does not heed her words and keeps running. The girl conveniently thinks that he is not letting her down because he has some kind of feelings for her. He may look cool up close, but he is still a skeleton. Her wild thoughts are halted when Jang Cheng mercilessly throws her on the ground. She talks with her mouth stuffed with leaves, questioning why he is like this. But she watches the guild members run past her and thinks that her little skeleton is trying to divert the attention of these players from her. At the end, Jiang Cheng sighs as he thinks that he has no choice but to act after all. He assesses the skills of the players chasing after him and knows that this set of skills is really for looting and disposal. Fortunately, the surprise attack just now has rendered their archer completely ineffective in combat and that guy's mental resilience seems surprisingly poor. So Jang Cheng finally stops and moves around in a fighting stance. The guild members notice that the girl is gone, but they know that her summoned creature is here, so she must be nearby as well. The captain says that he did not expect her to use her summoned creature so efficiently and warns other members to be on alert. She might be hiding nearby and waiting for an opportunity. The caption thinks to himself that he just did not expect her to take care of so many beasts in such a short amount of time all by herself. It could be for leveling up or for the materials, but something doesn't feel right. And the forest is giving off strange vibes. So he needs to investigate first before taking action. So he asks the shadow owl to use his detection skills to check out the surrounding area but he does not respond because he is too angry that a summoned creature dared to attack him and takes out his weapons. The captain knows that it cannot be anything good and tries to calm him down, but Jang Cheng provokes him, urging him to shoot the weapon in his hand. Jang Cheng strikes the incoming weapon with a swing and is happy that they took the bait. The captain knows that they acted prematurely, but seeing that there is no ambush, he orders to strike first and take down the summoned creature. The captain attacks but is surprised by the speed of the skeleton because he knows that the skeleton summoned by a necromancer is supposed to be sluggish. All the guild members present get a warning notification in red that the hidden boss, the master of the Bear Mountain, has marked them. The guild members are taken by surprise because this is the hidden boss their vice leader has been searching for. But they are more shocked that the aggression of the hidden boss is directed towards them. With a single impact from the hidden boss, the shadow owl is eliminated, but the players still do not understand why the hidden boss suddenly appears. Their first suspicion is that this might be the target of that girl with the summoned creature. The master of the bear mountain activates its skill, the bears rampage and roars in an ear-deafening loud voice. The captain makes a wise decision to run away because he knows that they cannot handle this situation. However, all their efforts of fleeing are proven futile because they are now floating in the air because the hidden boss has activated the skill Tornado Force Field. At the expense of the guild members, Jang Cheng finally remembers that the bear boss's skill is Storm Force Field and Bears Rampage. It is really tough to deal with, but the skill of a basic boss should not last for too long, so Jang Cheng decides to watch just how long they can hold out. The captain thinks that they got lured by that girl and that she knew about the presence of the hidden boss from the start and used the summoned creature to lure them here. He notes that the summoned creature is still here, so she should be watching from nearby. Suddenly, the gravity vanishes and they use this chance to run for their lives. The captain decides to run first and then report the presence of the hidden boss, but he notices that the summoned creature is no longer where he was before. Just then, he and his other team members get slashed and ultimately eliminated by Jang Cheng. His last thoughts are that he got defeated by a summoned creature. He needs to notify the guild leader and they need to take out the girl, and the hidden boss and his consciousness vanishes as he watches the skeleton thumbs him down. Jang Cheng finally gets the 20 evolution points he was missing from his next evolution, and the screen pops up for the option to evolve while the bear boss is approaching him. 
Jang Chang opts to evolve right this instant and the evolution starts. The hidden bear boss's mouth is just at his head when Jang Chang goes into the evolution and the lightning strikes at him. He catches the fang of the bear with one hand as the notifications keep popping up telling him that he has three seconds of protection because of his evolution and that he has successfully evolved into a third rank skeleton close combat striker. He further obtains the skill, the combat striker's bone armor of level one, the arrow arm guard form. When the evolution protection time is over, Jang Cheng strikes at the bear's joints as the notification tells him that the ability Swift Draw has leveled up to level 2 and the attack speed has increased by 40%. Jang Cheng is very satisfied by this attack speed. The hidden boss, the king of the bear mountain has a bear monster constitutional form, and its weakness still lies in its joints and its neck. Jang Cheng prompts it to come at him so that he can test his durability and strength. The bear boss does not like this gesture and strikes head on, making Jang Cheng fly in the air. Jang Cheng understands that despite evolving, he is still not strong enough to face it head on, but thankfully, his new skill has given him the ability to take on long range fights. Jang Cheng takes a fighting stance with his skill activated, but the king of the bear mountain also activates its sandstorm domain. Jang Cheng knows that under the obstruction of this skill, if he gets pulled over, his actions would be severely limited, and after his movement gets disrupted, he will definitely get hit by it while in close combat. If that is the case, it would not matter if he shoots his arrows carelessly and he does so. Since this is gravitational magic that has a large area of effect, it would do the same thing for the bone arrows, and under the effect of the gravitational field, there is no way his arrows would miss, and they hit the bear boss just as intended. Jang Cheng plans to obstruct the bear's field of vision first, and then he uses the force of gravity to strengthen his attack to attack the bear's stomach. His plan succeeds, but the king of the bear mountain uses his skill again, and Jang Cheng can feel the gravity strengthen, so this must be its last stand. It is a pity that Jang Cheng does not have many arrows left, so he proceeds to attack the bear boss head-on under the force of gravity. He attacks at the bear's head and feels the force of gravity vanish. Apparently, the time for the skill to remain activated has ended but with the bear's current condition, it is inevitable that it will end soon. Jang Cheng finds his new skill to be quite useful, but he finds it a pity that this skill needs a consumable bone powder. He suddenly hears a dark voice telling him that he has been waiting for a long time. Jang Cheng is clearly startled and surprised, because he knows that the early bosses were not designed to interact with the players. The bear tells him that he is going to give him the last present of the bear mountain to him, and a notification tells Jang Cheng that the king of the bear mountain is going to activate his skill Thousand Lightning Strikes. The system tells him to be careful and avoid it. Jang Cheng is utterly shocked and thinks that the public release might have an additional introduction line to the boss for this newly added skill. He is frustrated that this boring game had to redesign and add such unnecessary things. But he thinks that this is a skill, so he will stop being so considerate and polite. He is immune to lightning skills after all. On the other hand, the girl is worried that something happened to her little skeleton because he did not return for such a long time. However, her bag limit has exceeded due to collection of so much material, and her speed has reduced by 40%. She throws away the material in her hand thinking that her skeleton diverted those players to save her so she has to help him as well. She takes a fighting stance ready to save her little skeleton, but is surprised to find a bear in the sky that falls down with great impact. She further gets a notification that she has achieved the first elimination of the hidden boss of the bear mountain, and her level has increased to level 10. The notification directs her to head to the main city to choose her specification. In the hunting tiger's headquarters, a man begs his boss, Cheng, to listen to his explanations, but the boss tells him that they are just a bunch of trash, do the is nothing to explain. They not only lose the bear's territory, but also let a newbie be the first one to eliminate the hidden boss. 
He says that he just left the bear's territory for a bit, and they caused such a huge mess for the guild, and he ended up losing a lot of money. The players lay on the ground with a golf ball in their mouth, and their boss talked to them. The man on the ground tries to explain that they would capture that girl and eliminate her so that she would not be able to set foot on the bear mountain again, and this would serve as a warning for others as well. They say that she was alone, and it was them who were careless, so they ask for another chance from their boss. But the boss takes out the golf stick and picks up that the player that took their assets was alone and was not even level 10, but the whole team was defeated by such a player. This angers him even further and shots at the gold ball, spilling blood while saying that there is no reason for him to keep around such players. He wipes his hand while saying that even in a combat of three against one, they were all eliminated and even let the newbie player find the hidden boss in the bear territory. They are such trash, but he is glad that such a thing did not happen in the valley territory. He asks his underling, Viper, if things are going well in the valley territory and a man behind him reassures him that there would be no issues in the valley territory. The boss warns that better be the case and orders for some reliable players to take care of the Nube player in the bear territory and tells him to continue sending reinforcements to the valley territory. He again warns him not to spoil his plans. Viper tells him not to worry because everything is under their control. In the ferocious bear mountain, the girl summons for more skeletons and tells him to stop being so lazy while collecting the materials because these can be exchanged for money. She even asks why these are all different from Zhang Cheng, who was able to defeat the boss of the bear mountain on its own. Zhang Cheng sits on top of the bear boss while all the other skeletons work to collect the materials. The girl shows Jiang Cheng her new equipment that she managed to get including the cloak, the tail, and the boots that enhance her abilities. However, Jiang Cheng is speechless, not that he can talk anyway, but the expression says it all. She even shows him the screen of all the materials she was able to get, and that they should head towards the city to get the occupational specialization and sell the materials so that they can be rich. Jiang Cheng still does not answer her, but luckily her attention is diverted by another skeleton that just dropped the materials and got scolded by the girl. Jiang Cheng sighs as he thinks that the ferocious bear magic equipment that costs over $10,000 is being treated as a fashion instead. He wondered when he would be able to get rid of this girl. He then observes his stats that have tremendously increased after his evolution. These stats are even higher than level 15 players. Not to mention, his new skill, a combat striker's bone guard, arrow arm guard, is quite useful. The only downside it has is that it requires consumables, but considering the amount of damage it causes, it is definitely worth evolution points. But the number of evolution points needed for the next evolution is way too much, and he only has 500 of them at the moment. He only gets 10 to 20 evolution points when he defeats a monster the same level as him, so it seems like defeating the bosses is a faster way of getting the evolution points. He really does not know when he would be able to max out these points. One thing is for sure, her summoner needs to get a specialization. The first skill of a necromancer after they choose a specialized occupation is to strengthen their skeleton summons, and strengthening a skeleton summons will increase all his stats by 30%. Since he is already bonded to her as her summon, if she gets stronger, that means he gets stronger as well. The girl calls for him telling him that there is a treasure chest here and his interest is piqued. The treasure chest is a purple rank that they got as a reward for defeating the Bear Mountain boss. Jiang Cheng nearly forgot that the loot from the hidden bosses is probably strengthening materials or the weapons. The girl opens the chest, and they find a rare skill book for all classes and an AoE for the skill, Thunderstrike. Jiang Cheng wonders if this is because they got the first elimination for such a low-level boss to drop such a great loot. The girl peeks at him saying that he really wants this skill book, since she was able to get so much material and money, all thanks to him. She gives him the skill book so he can use this. Jiang Cheng becomes happy thinking that she is not as money-minded as he thought she was. However, 
The girl says that she read in the description that using the skill can attack multiple monsters at once, so he would be able to farm monsters at a much faster rate, and she will get even more rich. After hearing that, Zhang Cheng takes back what he said just a moment ago. He decides to forget that and learn a new skill first. A screen pops up asking if he wants to learn the Thunder Strike skill, and when Zhang Cheng selects the option, he learns the new skill within three seconds. The girl urges him to try out the new skill while Zhang Cheng thinks that it has been a while since he felt the excitement of obtaining a new skill, so he plans to test out just how powerful this new skill is instantly. With a swing of his sword, Zhang Cheng uses the skill that spreads lightning in the area. The girl and the skeletons clap for his new skill, but Zhang Cheng finds this skill to be quite weak. Even if it is an AoE skill, the amount of damage it does is far too little. He then remembers that he can use evolution points to evolve his skills as well. Even though the evolution points are important, but it is imperative for him to increase the speed at which he is eliminating the monsters. So he uses all his evolution points to level up thunder strikes. The girl is surprised by the impact of leveling up and notices that the aura around his little skeleton has changed once again. Thunder strike levels up to level five and Zhang Cheng uses this skill once more and he is able to get the results he wanted so he was right to level up this skill. Now, he would be able to earn evolution points more quickly. Next is to get his evolution points, so he picks up the girl on his shoulders, on which she complains that he can carry her like a princess instead. However, Zhang Cheng is thinking about getting her a specialization and swooping through the valley territory towards the main city. Ever since the Great Wasteland was open to the public, the AI controlling the game started its evolution and predictions. Countless missions and plotlines were constantly being changed, quickly forming an extremely complex game world and system. And the final goal of these missions are those dungeons that contain a large amount of items and gold. At the same time, within these dungeons, there is a chance of leveling the dungeon up to a hidden dungeon after satisfying a specific set of conditions. The money and items obtained from these hidden dungeons are considerably more compared to regular ones, creating a gradual trend. As such, once the game opened itself to the public, various guilds tried their best to quickly monopolize a few key monster spawning grounds, trying their best to investigate and find a way to clear the conditions for the hidden dungeon. The ferocious Bear Mountain and Valley were territories watched over by the Tiger Hunting Guild, and a part of their jurisdiction. At the Valley Territory entrance, three players discuss among themselves that no wonder their boss was so angry because in the past, the boss and the vice president were unable to find clues to trigger the hidden boss despite having occupied the ferocious Bear Mountain for so long. And now that they've left, someone managed to swipe it from under their noses. No wonder they are angry about it. However, they do not understand why they have been dispatched in the valley territory when Bear Mountain has been hit. However, one of them explains that hidden bosses never respawn again. That is why apart from helping players level up, the ferocious Bear Mountain has no worth to them anymore. In comparison, valley territory is different. The hidden dungeon has yet to be cleared here, so that is why they were sent on a mission to help out instead. So if they can ambush that player here, they will capture them and report to the boss, and will take all her equipment and materials and become rich. One of them questions how they know she will pass through here, so the flower anaconda tells them that according to the intel, she is just a level 10 player, and they have to go to the main city to get an occupational specialization. And since she's probably acting suspiciously, she won't walk in there openly, she'll definitely get to the city through the side gates instead of the main one. One of the roads leading to the side gate is right in the regular path. This is a convenient and effective way of helping them resolve this problem instantly. One member in three is impressed by the flower anaconda and praises him. He then asks if the person they are waiting to ambush a pervert, and the flower anaconda tells them that he has heard rumors that the player is a psycho necromancer who weighs over 200 kilograms, and although she is a level 10 player, she likes to take players 
and do some strange kinky plays with them. It truly is terrifying even for them. The flower anaconda says that he hates these types of players the most, but they came prepared with their equipment. That player is a necromancer mage, but her skeleton seems to cause physical damage, so they all wore equipment that provides resistance to physical damage, and their specialization is knights. And the divine stat will completely suppress the necromancer's summon, and it would be easy to capture her. They seem excited for their plan, but notice lightning and are completely surrounded by it, wondering where this AoE attack came from. The two idiots think that they have found the hidden boss, but the flower anaconda tells them that it is the attack of a player, the mage, and tells them to heal quickly. They are caught off guard by the amount of magical critical damage, because their equipment only provides physical damage resistance and no magic damage resistance. They want to retreat, but there is no chance for that, and are ultimately defeated without much of a fight. After the one-sided beating up, the girl instructs the skeletons to collect the materials dropped and drinks mana drink, as she sits on top of Jiang Cheng's shoulder. He cannot believe that his summoner is someone like this. They finally notice the bodies of the defeated players they inadvertently knocked out. Jiang Cheng examines the bodies, wondering what these players were doing in the bushes. He notices the tiger hunting emblem on their gear and notices that these players are paladins and all wore armor with high defense stats. He catches that these players were waiting for him. He heard that the Tiger Hunting Guild has jurisdiction over a large area, but he never thought that they owned the valley territory as well. It seems like if Jiang Cheng wants to safely pass through the valley territory, he will require some information. The girl finds the flower anaconda still alive and calls Jiang Cheng. The flower anaconda, who is still paralyzed, is thinking that he miscalculated because there is definitely something strange about the girl in front of him that was a really strong AoE skill. He knows that there is no chance for him to earn money now and decides to call for reinforcements. However, he is attacked before he can touch his system screen by the summoned skeleton Jiang Cheng. Jiang Cheng, who is feeling lucky to have found the source of information, decides to take off her armor and tie him up to be on the safe side. Even the girl is surprised by his actions, but is more shocked to find that under the armor of the flower anaconda is a girl who is cursing to find that the guild information about the opponent to be a pervert were true. Ming Ming asks if it was truly necessary to do that because it looks strange, so Jiang Cheng explains to her through actions that he did so to make the flower anaconda not go offline or try to eliminate herself. The flower anaconda looks at the two of them and thinks if there is something wrong with the head of the girl in front of her because she is talking to her summon. She really does not want to be tortured by someone like that. Ming Ming politely apologizes for hurting the flower anaconda and tells her that they have some questions. However, the flower anaconda tells her to finish her off because she is not going to tell them anything. She hates perverts like her, so there is no need to humiliate her like this. It is better to just eliminate her. Ming Ming is offended by her and explains that they only tie her up so that she does not run away, and they really just have some questions to ask. Jiang Cheng gestures to Ming Ming to use Plan B, but she seems hesitant to do that, but without listening to her, he takes out something that makes the flower anaconda speechless it's money, 50 silver of it. Mei Ming thinks that the flower anaconda ended her life because she looks so quiet so she must not be interested in money. Her main concern is to not waste money because they need to use it thriftily to live well. However, the flower anaconda stops her and says that she really read her well. Now she is ready to answer questions. The current game currency rate is 1 silver for 2,000 renminbi. Jiang Cheng gestures to ask her everything about the Tiger Hunting Guild. Ming Ming has somehow become the perfect translator now and can understand everything that her summoned skeleton gestures about. The flower anaconda is finally freed and Ming Ming asks her everything they need to know. The flower anaconda says that she can answer all of this, but Ming Ming has some suspicions and warns her to not lie to them. She spent a lot of money to buy her off after all. The flower anaconda never thought the little cutie before her would be so rich. She says Ming Ming is very different from what she expected and approaches her. 
Meng Meng tells her to stay away, but she reassures her that she is not a pervert, but to Meng Meng, she certainly looks like one right now. Just then, Jiang Qing grabs her hand, preventing her from touching Meng Meng. The red player asks if they really have to be so wary of her when they even took her weapon from her. Meng Meng explains that she was planning to attack them to begin with and now wants to cooperate with them, so of course this is suspicious. The flower anaconda tells them that the guild is the one who has a grudge against them, not her. She and her buddies are only workers for the money. Although they did suffer some losses, they were compensated because of the amount of money they gave her. She even lied to her buddies that everything was fine, and there was no need to contact the others, so no one would find traces of them from her. With all this explanation, Meng Meng decides to trust her for this once. The flower anaconda hugs Meng Meng as she decides to answer their questions, making Jiang Cheng sigh. She tells them that they do not have to worry about being chased, because ambushing was something they did on their own. They were not instructed to do so by the guild. The players that have been instructed to chase them are probably still at the ferocious Bear Mountain, and based on their current speed, there is no way they would be able to catch up. Considering their low levels, even if they end up fighting, they would be eliminated. Mei Ming says that she is praising her too much, she was just lucky. The flower anaconda warns them that they should not let their guard down, because the valley territory is not easy to pass through. The valley territory has always been heavily guarded by the guild, and more players were recently dispatched to go there and help. Moreover, she even heard that something happened at the heart of the valley territory, and now, even players like them who patrol the borders of the territories are patrolling the valley territory itself. She tells them that she heard that all the players that are above level 15 have been brought over to Valley Territory to help out and now the Valley Territory is as secured as a metal drum so no one can pass through the Valley Territory without people knowing. And the strongest player, Guild's Vice President, Viper, will definitely be at the heart of the Valley Territory too. The Vice President Viper is a level 30 player and he's already gone through his second specialization as an assassination. Even if they are pretty powerful, they will not be able to defeat him. And not to mention, Ming Ming is a key player that they are currently taking note of, an unspecialized female necromancer who plays on her own. It is way too easy to recognize her. And considering that she has only just reached level 10, she is just a fat piece of meat that everyone can pounce on. If she really wants to go through the valley territory to reach the main city and undergo occupation specialization, then she should be thinking of ways to safely cross the valley territory. Meng Meng turns to Jiang Cheng after listening to her. He is also thinking that things are more complicated than he thought they were. He knows that if it is the valley territory, then the strange changes in the dungeon would be a result of an NPC mission that was given within the territory itself. Unlike the ferocious Bear Mountain, the Valley Territory is a territory with its own complete game system. It also has a regular dungeon and because of that, those players that wish to trigger the hidden dungeon can only wait for the NPC within the territory to give them a mission that is related to the dungeon. The Great Wasteland's algorithm is constantly changing, just like how players are able to trigger different types of Easter eggs from an NPC. Players are also able to get random missions as well. If they go ahead and complete a mission without understanding what it entails, they will definitely suffer a loss. The risk would be far too high, but he cannot let go of a chance like this. Since the Tiger Hunting Guild has delegated so many players to help them, the mission must be difficult. Jiang Cheng decides to find out what the mission is before making a plan. When looking at the gear of the defeated players, he hits upon an idea. The flower anaconda is shocked to find that they want her to lead the way to the valley territory. Mei Ming says that as long as Jiang Cheng wears the defeated player's gear, no one would be able to recognize them. The flower anaconda refuses to do this deed, because she just wants to earn money, she does not want to be kicked out from the guild, because unspecialized players like her would have no future in gaming if they do not have a guild to rely on. Meng Meng offers to pay her one silver for guiding them. 
The flower anaconda finds it unfair that they gave her 50 silvers for the information but are going to give her just one silver for the guiding. Maiming asks how much she wants, claiming she is also poor. However, the flower anaconda says that she looks quite rich as she has fetched 50 silver before. Zheng Cheng on the other end thinks that this summoner is too stingy and will end up in a difficult situation because of it. He pulls out a gold coin. Meng Ming tells him to stop, but the flower anaconda agrees to guide them for one gold coin, but she makes it clear that she is only going to bring them to the place where the guild originally sent her. The rest is upon them to do on their own. Meng Ming calls her a sly negotiator for this. The flower anaconda says that it is dangerous to pass right through the valley territory, so they need to listen to her well and not make any hasty movements. Meng Ming is still a little bitter over her money and tells her that they already gave her the money, so why is she being so chatty? The flower anaconda tells her that there are not just the players, but also the monsters that they have to look out for so, it is good to be cautious. She summons the dress up of one of her comrades and warns Ming Ming to not summon her other skeletons on the way or they would be discovered and also to hide her player information. They form a team so their experience would be shared in a group and as for the materials and the money, the flower anaconda suggests they split three by seven. Ming Ming is not happy about the split, but she has no choice but to conform. The flower anaconda tells them that there are going to be a lot of players in their ways so she would use her shield. The monsters are not high level but are difficult to deal with because of their number. However, Meng Ming says there is no need to worry because her summoned skeleton is so powerful. Zhang Cheng uses his thunder strike skill and takes care of many small monsters in an instant, even earning 220 evolution points. The flower anaconda is shocked by this skill and Meng Ming feels proud of her little skeleton. She even says that since flower anaconda was the one to say that she cannot summon her other skeletons, she has to be the one to pick up the materials that dropped. The flower anaconda complains about being her portable inventory, but decides to pick up the material because she is going to get her share as well. However, she warns them not to be so conspicuous because there are quite a number of elite monsters in the valley territory as well, including a level 15 elite monster, the demonic stone golem, and they need to cooperate with each other to defeat it. However, Jiang Cheng defeats it and earns 400 evolution points. Meng Meng says it is not strong enough and tells the flower anaconda to collect the material. The flower anaconda, having no other choice, says not to be complacent because there is still a giant valley python up ahead. However, Jiang Cheng defeats it and earns 400 evolution points, and the same pattern repeats. The flower anaconda is shocked, not believing her eyes because this is not the strength a level 10 player should have. She is also shocked that a skeleton has a skill as well that seems to be obtained from the bare mountain, but it is just not the skill from those movements. It seems like the summoned creature has a mind of its own. The flower anaconda decides to cling to Meng Ming definitely, even if there is something wrong with her head. They suddenly hear a player call out for help, Upon looking they find that a kid is being chased by the player from the Tiger Hunting Guild. Meng Ming questions why there is a kid in the workers of the Tiger Hunting Guild, if he has logged in through someone else's account. However, the flower anaconda tells her that this is impossible because when you make an account in the Great Wastelands, it copies how you look in real life. The kid notices the flower anaconda, asking to save her saying that the man chasing him has gone crazy and captured his friends as well. The man thinks that they are the kid's helper and decides to eliminate all of them, even if has to use all his equipment. The man strikes, making the ground shatter, so Jane Cheng grabs the flower anaconda and Meng Ming to dodge the impact. The red impact notices that Meng Ming has fainted due to the impact and is stunned that her summon can still move even with her fainting. The man they are facing is a brawler who specializes in whirlwind brawler and his tyrant body and armor piercing stats completely counter her specialized class. But the man starts coughing, indicating that his health is really low. The kid shouts at Zhang Cheng to eliminate the man because he is already in low health and if the brawler manages to activate his skill, 
they would be in trouble. Jang Cheng notices that something is not right. Even though this brat looks like an unspecialized poacher, he was able to hurt a level 18 whirlwind brawler to the point where he almost reached death. Furthermore, the brawler's equipment looks expensive, so why would he run despite suffering such severe injuries just to try to eliminate a kid? The man calls them despicable, but the flower anaconda is offended and says that he is one to attack immediately and not try to explain himself. However, the man says that he has nothing to say to the people who go around abusing their power and authority and use such despicable methods. He plans to eliminate them all and activates his skill, the Dance of Blood. The flower anaconda comes forth and activates her shield, taking the strike head on, making Jiang Cheng think that she is not that bad. The man is shocked to see a divine paladin, but the flower anaconda says that it is not that easy to bully her. If he cannot even talk nicely, he is better off eliminated. She uses her divine spear to push him back, and Zhang Cheng comes from behind to finish him off. The kid is excited to meet a magic swordsman and the members from the same guild, and decides all by himself that the equipment dropped by the man is going to belong to him. Zhang Cheng notices that the brat sure knows how to loot. The flower anacondas questions the kid which group he belongs to and how come she does not know him. The kid shrugs it off by saying that she does not need to worry about not knowing her and that his name is either. He then runs off, telling them to follow him where there are more of them. The group follows him, and the kid excitedly says that they are definitely going to be amazed by the number of them, and that he is happy that they are people from the guild or his efforts would have gone to waste. The flower anaconda questions him who is his boss, and he answers that his boss is a ghost bat. The flower anaconda is surprised to find about the ghost bat because he recently rose up in ranks and helped the guild leader with some missions. So how come he is not at the heart of the valley territory and is roaming near the borders? The kid laughs out loud, saying that they have been waiting for some days. It is because the boss assigned them some tasks that they are earning so much money. Jang Cheng notices something dripping on him and looks up to find a player begging to be eliminated and saying that he is not going to play this game anymore. The player is hung from the tree, upside down, tied by a rope. The players that have been trapped are unable to touch their system screen to look out of the game. The kid tells them that they are here, but the group is shocked to find a lot of players trapped, unable to log off, begging to be eliminated. The kid proudly says that he is the one that set up these traps, the hunting grounds they have designed and created. Jang Cheng was right, they are hunting players. The kid happily says that they leave their supplies and take their equipment, and unless it is inevitable, they never eliminate the players, so they can never tell others what they are doing. The flower anaconda gets angry, saying that they dare to use children to lower the guards of the players to hunt them, and asks if the guild leader knows what they are doing. A member of the ghost bat team, Shadow Leopard, arrives at the scene and asks the flower anaconda why she took off her helmet when she does not like people knowing that she is a woman. He notices a fainted Meng Meng and says that her magic cloak looks expensive and asks where she got it. However, as soon as he finishes his words, he is faced with a sword on his neck that belongs to Jiang Cheng. Shadow Leopard quickly says that they are all part of the Tiger Hunting Guild, and are brothers, so there is no need to be alarmed for they would not attack them. He wonders why he is so fast and tells the flower anaconda that she has found better teammates. The flower anaconda tells him to keep his distance while in her mind. She is praising Ming Ming to be able to control her summon even when she is fainted or she might be pretending to have fainted. She truly is cunning yet reliable. The kid runs towards the shadow leopard telling him that he has managed to eliminate the whirlwind brawler, but he is stunned to find him all silent. Shadow Leopard then punches him in the face, saying that he dares to be proud of himself when he allowed him to escape in the first place. Kid apologizes, saying it will never happen again. Shadow Leopard orders to carry them back and everyone obliges. However, the flower anaconda is pissed off and asks if the guild leader knows that they are doing this kind of thing. 
Shadow Leopard says that he only listens to the ghost bat's orders and does not care about anything else, and asks if she was also ordered by the Shadow Marsh to help with the Valley Territories. The Flower Anaconda does not answer his question and tells him to answer her instead. However, Shadow Leopard says that there is no need to be so mad. They are just capturing a few players, tells her that all the teams coming from the territory's outskirts have to listen to the ghost bat's orders, and the same goes for her, and that has to do with the Valley Territory's dungeons. Jang Cheng touches her shoulder to give her a message, and the flower anaconda knows what she has to do. Shadow Leopard goes on to say that if she does not wish to be removed from the Valley Territory, she should bring her team members and follow him to the depth of the core domain of the Valley Territory. Shadow Leopard instructs the group that now that they have reached their destination, they should look for a ghost bat who would assign the mission to their team. Upon reaching, either starts shouting, calling others to help him move the items. He even tells them that there is a lot of loot and the other kids start gathering near him some asking for the equipment and others teasing him that he almost lost the man this time. Jang Cheng looks at the scene and finds it annoying and astounding that this is a campsite dedicated solely to hunting down players. Furthermore, all the helpers are children that have now completely become poachers. Shadow Leopard tells the flower anaconda to not make a bad expression because all these children are orphans who need a way to make a living and what they are doing is basically charity for them. Jang Cheng further analyzes that the Tiger Hunting Guild has used so many children to hunt and loot players. Apparently, the guild is taking advantage of certain loopholes in the game, since it has only recently been released. Besides the gear, they are quite concerned about the supplies and ensuring there are no leaks about this location. It is probably because of the hidden missions, but the question is which hidden missions? Looks like Jiang Cheng will have to continue following and gather more information in the camp to find more information with regards to the hidden missions. But the flower anaconda seems to be looking a bit strange for a while now. Jiang Cheng touches her shoulder as if to remind her something, and she responds by saying that she knows what they agreed upon, so there is no need for him to worry about. It is the first time for the flower anaconda to be comforted by a summon, this truly is a strange feeling for her. She returns to her former self and says that they would be heading towards the center of the camp to receive their new mission. They arrive at a tent and everyone is astonished to see the flower anaconda take off her helmet, saying that they heard she was a beautiful woman but never expected her to be this beautiful. They even repeat that they heard that the ghost bat wanted to take her in his squad, but she broke his nose. The conversation continues and someone says that it would be more like being accepted to his harem and she would not be in such a situation right now. They assume that she took off her helmet to see the ghost bat, so it seems like it is still not too late for ghost bat to take her in, but he is with the guild master side now, so it could be that he does not want her anymore. The crowd around her even brings up how she grew up in an orphanage and has a disabled brother. Despite all this nonsense, the flower anaconda does not respond one bit however. Jang Cheng who is also listening to all this, finally understands why she cannot stand the sight of those children being exploited. An old player approaches her and tells her that he knows she is not on good terms with the ghost bat, but it is his advice to not be too rash when meeting with the ghost bat. She should prioritize the guild and the profits first. As for those orphans, even though they are not happy about them as well. It is a rare opportunity for them to earn some money, so if she causes trouble, they would not be helping her. He even tells her that she cannot touch the supplies, but can have a share in the equipment. The flower anaconda is finally pissed and says that she already knows all this. She then says to Meng Meng that from now on, she is going to be called the milk cow and her summon is going to be called electric donkey. Jang Cheng finds her naming sense nonsense. They enter an inner tent and find a dwarf man engaged in an unspeakable act with a woman that he captured. Even Jang Cheng curses him for being trash and the flower anaconda calls out to him. This man is the ghost bat. He turns around and the first question he asks is why the flower anaconda took off her helmet. 
but she is obliged to answer to him so she does not and asks about the mission they are going to be assigned. The ghost bat does not stop and says that she is the type he likes the most. The flower anaconda kicks him, that he deserves very much, and again asks about the mission to be assigned. However, the ghost bat is like a leech who still says that he likes her a lot more now. The flower anaconda asks if it is exciting to get scolded by her, and he actually says yes. He finally comes down to business and tells her that protecting this campsite is her new duty. If one ventures a bit further into the forest from this camp, he will reach the dungeons of the valley territory. So her new job is to keep other players from entering this area. The flower anaconda asks why they must be the ones to do it. Ghost Bat tells her that he cannot tell her that, which is if she does not understand what he means. The flower anaconda gets mad and tells him to not push his luck. She further asks him if the guild leader knows he is using those kids. The ghost bat tells her that the guild leader indeed knows about it. In fact, it was his own idea to use those children. He tells her to not take things seriously and reminds her that she wanted to climb up ranks to raise her brothers, so this is her opportunity. He offers her to join him, and he would ensure that she gets the most money. He would not even hold a grudge against her for breaking his nose. He tells her to be his woman. The flower anaconda grabs him by the collar and says that if trash is going to come from his mouth, she doesn't mind shutting it up. The ghost bat warns her that all the equipment needs to be sent to the guild leader, so if she interrupts his plans, she would be in hot waters. He even asks her if she truly believes that the guild leader is going to utilize her as heavily as when she first joined the guild. She is the righteous flower anaconda after all. He told her before that the guild leader likes her, but she acted aloof, and now she is in this kind of situation. The ghost bat shows her a ring, telling her that he is now guild leader's comrade. And this is his ticket to the upper ranks, so when the guild leader manages to capture the core area, he would be able to join this realm's missions as well. He provokes her by saying that she can just stay here and be the orphanage's headmistress. A system notification suddenly appears in front of Jang Cheng about the ring, and he seems interested and shows off his aura. The ghost bat notices him and asks who he is because he never saw him around, and asks if he is the disabled brother of hers. Jang Cheng uses his sword to attack the ghost bat, making the flower anaconda surprised. The ghost bat shouts at the flower anaconda for daring to attack her. Jang Cheng is sure that his sword make the strike, but the ghost bat seems to be wearing some kind of life's saving accessory, truly cunning. The ghost bat demand to be let go and uses black magic shadow orb to attack Jiang Cheng, but is surprised to find that his opponent remains unharmed even after taking a few shadow magic orbs. This is all because Jiang Cheng has special resistance to certain type of magic due to his species, so he is unharmed. Seeing that Jiang Cheng is unaffected, the ghost bat quickly changes strategies and begs to not to be eliminated. He even offers his equipment in return. However, Jiang Cheng finds him too noisy and does not want to listen to him anymore. So he uses his skill of thunder to eliminate this piece of trash. Two rings drop from his fingers. One is the ring of stone giant and the other is the lamenting lamb spirit's ring of trials. Jang Cheng finds this item amazing. He cannot believe that this trash had such good items. It looks like he was able to obtain quite a bit of equipment from raiding the valley territory. It is important to note that Mei Ming is still sleeping peacefully on his shoulder. Jang Cheng decides to give the life-saving ring to the flower anaconda, who is shouting at him for eliminating the ghost bat. However, Jang Cheng does not pay her any mind and continues to analyze that the Ring of Trials is from a boss rank NPC that is related to necromancy, so he must complete this mission. Since he has gathered enough information, he decides to leave, making the flower anaconda even more scared. However, Jang Cheng needs to hurry to the dungeons and snatch the mission away from them. He gets out of the tent and bumps into a man who shouts at him for spilling his beer. 
Jiang Cheng thinks that since he needs to snatch the mission anyway, his next agenda should be to eliminate all the tiger hunting players in this campsite. Jiang Cheng lets out his energy and eliminates a player, making everyone surprised and causing chaos to break out. But Jiang Cheng is not the least worried. He is getting his evolution points after all. The flower anaconda thinks that Ming Ming is the one who is ordering her summon to go on a havoc and tells her stop or they are all doomed. Jiang Cheng analyzes that the players present here are level 14 at most and all of them have pretty basic occupation. There are not even magicians or paladins among them, just a bunch of rookies that pose no threat to him. However, the players present are shocked that someone dares to stand against them in their own sight and give Jiang Cheng the choice to leave his equipment to log off and leave. But before he can say the second option, Jiang Cheng strikes him, making everyone present astonished. They decide to attack the opponent at once so Jiang Cheng also starts fighting seriously. Jiang Cheng uses his skill, the arm guard bone arrow, to lower their health first, but a player steps forward and places a large wooden board in front of him. However, Jiang Cheng has the speed advantage because the player is wearing heavy equipment, making him too slow. Jiang Cheng strikes at his joints, where the armor is weak and finishes him off in a single blow. The elite blue team that belongs to the vice leader Viper arrives at the scene. Jiang Cheng analyzes them as a swordsman and an assassin, having pretty high levels. They start the fight without further ado, talking about splitting the equipment and the money after taking down their opponent. However, Jiang Cheng is worried about missing out on the mission he was supposed to catch. The Lamenting Lamb Spirit's Gaze is a type of selection trial. It will only be able to summon the Lamb Spirit by filling up the Gaze Meter and passing the mission in the designated location. Being a high-level boss that far surpasses the monsters in this territory, his arrival will cause all the levels of the monsters in the near vicinity to be raised as well. The Tiger Hunting Guild members will be confused by the sudden rise of the monster levels and will assume that fighting monsters is the only way to increase the gaze meter. However, eliminating monsters is the least efficient method for summoning, as continuous combat will only cause a significant depletion of supplies. The Lamb Spirit isn't the mission's final goal, he is merely giving out missions in place of his master level 99 undead boss, the Great Magister of Bones, Veronica. She is the true architect of this mission. If the players manage to complete her mission, they will not just acquire equipment and items, they will also receive an undead-type hidden occupation-changing scroll. Jiang Cheng thinks that the flower anaconda's luck is also good because ordinary players would not be able to get this mission. The players that Jiang Cheng is fighting get impatient as he is so slippery and looks like he is toying with them so they drink a strengthening potion. However, Jiang Cheng is thinking that judging by the size of this campsite, the Lamp Spirit must have already been in the Valley Territory for approximately a week. Even if the Tiger Hunting Guild's been grinding monsters to raise the gaze meter, the effectiveness of such a method is incredibly low. Even so, that gaze meter should almost be filled by now. So he has no time left. He has to head towards the core area right now. The players finally decide to take help and ask other players to shoot anything at him with long range. Jiang Cheng also notes that the speed of the two players have increased due to the strengthening potion. Jiang Cheng was saving the evolution points to fight that vice guild leader Viper, who is a level 30 player. But he cannot waste any more time. He opens up his system screen, but all the players surround him and attack him at the same time. The smoke is all around and players cannot see what is happening, questioning if their opponent is finished. The assassin tells them that he stabbed right through him, so he should be dead, but he is surprised to find that his dagger does not feel right. Jiang Cheng uses his sword to end him as he tells others to run. Jiang Cheng has successfully evolved his Thunder Strike skill to level 10 and even got a new skill called Lightning Body. The other player can see the bones through his torn clothes and finally knows that his opponent is not human. Meng Meng is zoned out while her status screen keeps notifying of the experience points. 
due to Zhang Cheng fighting the members of the Tiger Guild. Flower Anaconda tries to shake her up, but finds that she has disconnected from the game. However, what she does not understand is that her summoned character is still active. A sudden thought passes through her mind, that maybe the summoned creature has awakened the consciousness, but she deems it impossible. Flower Anaconda peeks from the tent and finds all the members of the Tiger Guild defeated. Now she thinks that Meng Meng ordered the summoned creature and went offline, but this action requires a lot of confidence. She does not know what to make out of this situation, but her instincts tell her to stay away from the summoned creature. On the other hand, Zhang Cheng is holding a dagger in his hand that is a level 15 item called Bloodthirsty Bandit's Swift Shadow Dagger. The special thing about this dagger is that someone requested it when Zhang Cheng was offering power leveling services. He spent too many all-nighters to get it and ended up in this game after death. It seems like the assassin in front of him is the one who made this request, so Zhang Cheng takes all his anger on this poor soul. The plus point is that he got the evolution points. Anyhow, the main goal is to head towards the core area, complete the mission there, and help Meng Ming get her specialized hidden job. This will help him a lot, but the Meng Ming in question has been offline for a while now, and no one knows when she will be able to reconnect. Zhang Cheng needs someone reliable who can look after her when he solely focuses on the battle. And as you thought, what better option than Flower Anaconda? Zhang Cheng goes to her immediately but frightens her in the process of deeming her as the perfect for the job. Zhang Cheng understands he has been too direct, so he tries to treat her gently. Flower Anaconda is surprised that he is not attacking her and remembers that he has been protecting her and Meng Ming along the way. The idea that this skeleton can have a consciousness of his own makes her blush as she remembers the time he took off her equipment. She is still thinking about it, trying to calm down, but Zhang Cheng is in a hurry. And now that he is done placating her, he grabs her by the back collar and drags her away. The individual players are emotional after knowing that Meng Ming went against the Tiger Guild for players like them. Of course, this is a lie fed to them by Flower Anaconda that actually came from Zhang Cheng's brilliant brain or skull, may I say. While Flower Anaconda fuels the fire, Zhang Cheng commends himself for finding the right person for the task. She even tells them that the Tiger Guild is not only after their gold and money, but also after the Valley Territory's hidden missions. This information makes things worse. Flower Anaconda tells them that the most of the Tiger Guild's forces are in the core area, so the security is not so high. They can easily escape to the main lands. Some of the individual players find it a pity that they are low on equipment and items, so they cannot hit upon the opportunity of hidden missions. Flower Anaconda's next announcement washes the pity that they were feeling. She announces that all the players can loot the Tiger Guild's equipment. The loot is no small matter, especially from the Tiger Guild who have been looting and gathering the equipment from other players. Zhang Cheng is happy with the outcome. However, one of the players noticed the abnormalities, so he should leave as soon as possible. Flower Anaconda notices Zhang Cheng leave so gives the final orders to the players to form groups and split up to escape, and she herself follows Zhang Cheng. She is still thinking that Meng Ming ordered her summoned creature and went offline. She believes it was all her plan, even recruiting Flower Anaconda. She is thinking about all this when she bumps into Zhang Cheng, who has stopped for some reason despite being in a hurry. She is about to question him, but Zhang Cheng lowers her head to save her from the incoming attack. The attacker reveals himself who seems to be a shadow assassin dot. It is a job that an assassin gets after going through occupation specialization. Furthermore, it has high requirements. Zhang Cheng assesses that his skills and level is far more than the assassins from before. Moreover, the Shadow Assassin is able to guess their plan of diverting the players and heading towards the core area. Zhang Cheng deems him smart, but the Flower Anaconda takes out the Divine Spear while refusing to admit his claims. However, the Shadow Assassin is not here to attack them. He says he is going to follow them. He is not interested in the mission. He only has one goal, and that is to eliminate Viper. As long as they let him have Viper, he is willing to follow their arrangements, 
He proposes this deal in front of Jiang Cheng, 